Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Joao Noronha, who is the Head of Statistics and Market Research for the National Authority of Communications for Portugal. Mr. Noronha, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about the fact that we're here at the World Telecommunication and ICT Indicator Symposium. Uh, what is the current status of the ICT sector in Portugal? Well, in terms of coverage, we are very well placed in terms of international rankings. Um, fixed coverage is uh, in the top five of the Euro European Union. Uh, operators have been investing heavily in fiber optics, uh, in uh, next generation cable networks. Um, the government itself has been uh, promoting the investment in rural areas, so both in terms of overall coverage and rural coverage, we are very hi uh, highly placed in terms of uh, international rankings. Uh, traditionally, uh, penetration and usage was lower than uh, the average, but uh, in the last few years, we've been able to uh, um, reach the uh, OECD average in terms of fixed broadband coverage. In terms of mobile coverage, we are still uh, below uh, the, the, national, the international averages, but uh, this is because mostly uh, our issues of pricing, in terms of pricing, we do not, do not compare so well. There, are, there is also a significant part of the population which is older, uh, retired, has lower incomes, lower illiteracy, and uh, so we have a sort of a div di digital divide within our countries, and uh, they uh, pu pull the, the average down, let's say. Uh, and that's it, um, basically. Let's talk about data. In what ways can data from the ICT sector contribute to improvements in regulation and policy making in the sector? Well, of course, data is uh, essential for uh, regulation and, and the policy making. Uh, investment, coverage, uh, usage, traffic, number of users, is, is, these are all essential elements that we need to uh, regulate and, and, uh, and, uh, and devise uh, smart policy policies. Um, these new uh, areas of, uh, of, uh, of uh, new sources of data are very important for us because they, they allow us to desegregate the general indicators and look at specific issues like, for instance, uh, specific uh, classes of users, specific uh, geographical areas, specific services, specific offers. And uh, uh, as the process of regulation uh, evolves, we, are, we need detailed, m m more detailed information than, uh, than uh, we used to. And these new sources of data are, are being very helpful. These new tools that we are uh, seeing uh, presented here are very useful. And of course, this is also, also a challenge for us because we have to, to learn new skills, we have to invest in uh, software and hardware, but I mean, it's, uh, it's essential for our work. Let's talk about challenges. What, uh, coming from a regulatory background, mm -hmm. what would you see are the main challenges I that regulators are facing in developing up-to-date policies and regulations for the ICT sector, and how is Portugal addressing them? Well, uh, in fact, our, our sector is very dynamic, so there are <laughs> always new challenges. Uh, so the, in the symposium yesterday, we talked about uh, this new uh, non-traditional operators that are entering the market, so-called over-the-top operators, and this uh, raises l lots of issues. Um, there is also a, a, a question yesterday by Professor Katz, which was also very interesting because he was saying that because of these operators, revenues are, are falling while invest investment in, in needs are, are increasing. We have to, to know how to deal with that. Also, all, um, there is a, an increased concentration by uh, market concentration in our country uh, between traditional operators, and uh, so there, are, there, there is a need to uh, to uh, guarantee user ri users' rights. And then there are other areas like cybersecurity, data privacy, data protection. Of course, we in Portugal are members of the European Union, and uh, there is a, a conc concerted effort uh, within the European Union to, to tackle these issues. We've been um, using uh, the guidelines from BEREC to deal, for instance, with uh, net neutrality issues. Uh, the new uh, telecoms code that uh, was uh, published by uh, the European Union also de deals very, very strongly in, uh, with uh, consumer rights and consumer protection. In fact, compared with a few years ago, we are uh, spending lots of time now with uh, these issues of contracts, uh, uh, complaints, this, this kind of uh, things. Um, and uh, basically, that's it. Now, you're also chair of the expert group on telecommunication ICT indicators. W wanted to ask you, from your perspective, what are the main takeaways from this year's symposium? Yes, well, uh, last, uh, la yesterday's session on the, on the IDI was, uh, was uh, important because it highlighted the importance of our mission. Uh, 
Um, it was highlighted that uh, a lot of countries are not uh, reporting the data or are, are reporting the data in a non-harmonized way. And so we have to do better what we are already doing, providing objective, de clear definitions that allow countries to produce uh, good quality data. We should uh, share uh, uh, our experiences, uh, our best pra practices, so that countries can implement uh, data collection uh, processes and uh, are able to overcome all the obstacles on data collection that they have. Um, this is the, the first takeaway. The second takeaway is all, all these new data sources that are uh, um, coming up and the new methods to, to deal with da uh, big data that are very, very important to us and will involve, uh, as I said earlier, an investment in hardware, software, uh, skills. Uh, so this is also an important area. And uh, from uh, yesterday's Mexi presentation by Mexico and today's presentation from Costa Rica, there is this area of data visualization and, and the data processing that uh, is uh, evolving very rapidly. And we probably have to also to adapt our methods and uh, start discussing this at, uh, at ACTI. Well, Mr. Rondia, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. And we hope to catch up with you again soon at, uh, at another symposium or another event. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.